here with Peter Quillen in Hayward, California. Big change yeah. from New York to Santa Monica, now uh, to over here. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the, this change. I think it was pretty much easy because I had like a someone relationship with, um, with Virgil Hunter. We sat down many times and talked, and um, it was a guy I was truly inspired by. You know, of course, Ward and him are pretty good friends. Not the friend that you want to tell everybody about, but I really enjoyed the relationship I got with him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a real inspiration to me on how to conduct myself and how to be in what is greatness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Somebody that you get to work around here. You got Bird over here, guys who you know had their ups and downs in this world. Who's motivated and like Virgil transform these guys so for me by me doing it in secret so much we didn't really make it big news and like you know i'm here training with virgil and try and use it for publicity i actually used it for myself so you know what i mean it was a, it's a good uh it was a good change for me and i was well needed at this time in my life how do you like it being up here as compared to new york or la or in hollywood think about all the distractions you really but that was a distraction yeah like, give me a, give me give me some distractions to you well hollywood there's tons New York, there's a lot of people, you're from there, so I would imagine uh, a you lot of distractions there too. Well, you know, over here, I don't know nobody, I'm not here to make friends. They're kind of isolated, huh? Yeah, I'm super yeah. isolated, I'm where I live at, it's like, just like, I'm there, I got a two-bedroom, um, a dolo by myself, so mm -hmm. I can sleep in any room. Yeah. I sleep but <laughs> naked sometimes, you know what I mean? <laughs> but all around, you know what I mean, like, I, I can um, get some peace of mind, my friend of thought that I can just like, I mean, you, we won't realize, man, when you start to get, you know, older in age, man, you'll realize how, how important alone time is, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because when you're younger, I don't think you could control thoughts when you're alone. But, like, when you get older, you start to learn how to have a process with yourself. Mm -hmm. How to, like, put those notes into action and make them goals and start accomplishing yeah. them. That's, that's what I'm pretty routine with when I'm here by myself. So, I really enjoy it. The hardest thing to do is, like, be away from my family. I had a new daughter. December 13th, you know, and she's beautiful and I, and you know what I mean, I'm gonna have to like uh, miss a lot of the times with them just to, you know, make this this thing of my career, mm -hmm. especially how I feel like where I'm at is the last thing of my career. Mm -hmm. um, the best, you know what I'm saying, for me and be the, the inspiration to my kids, my own, and to all my fans as well, you know what I'm saying. You know, you brought up a good point, you know, being a fighter is a, at times you can be extremely lonely, it you is, know? Man. Well, you, and this is what hard. Just imagine being this kind of job. This yeah. job, this job is different. Yeah. This job is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. This is my lifestyle. So yeah. whatever I do outside of this job or in my own life affects my ability to perform in mm -hmm. that ring. So I have to make sure that my lifestyle is clean on outside. So like, it's always so much temptation and distractions that's out there in your regular life, right? Even with family. Mm -hmm. I mean, say I live in a you know, my, me and my wife don't even live together right now because she allowed me to live out the house right now to be able to like be close to a gym. I need to be close to a gym. I need to be always in the gym. Mm. Not just in my mind. I'm in the gym in my mind, but it's well physical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, um, she live in a place where she felt comfortable, where she wanna raise my kids so they can get to school in and that that environment that she wanna bring them up in, that um I can't be part of that environment right now. So the balance of the two, when I'm in New York is crazy because sometimes I gotta go out there, spend time with them, get back to New York, get on a train, drive out there, it's like it's it's crazy. But you know what I'm saying? It's like this is the sacrifices where you know people don't get to see from fighters. You know what I mean? Everybody got a different story, everybody got a different situation. It just happened that, you know, that alone time that you get, you know, you got guys. I can't be alone, and you see them with guys all the time, and, yeah. and that's hard. That's that's nerve wracking for me to see that because, mm -hmm. like, when you're a fighter, right? Who do you go in the ring with? Your trainer, your cut man, right? Yeah. And even they don't go in the ring with you. Yeah, that's they, you they, by yourself. You yeah. take what they taught you, or yeah. their vision of what you should do while you're in there, but it's really all up to you. Mm -hmm. That's why all this scientific shit that motherfuckers be doing, <laughs> like, like I'm doing this, I'm got this shit on, I'm, I'm wearing this kind of equipment. It's supposed to make you better, but then one punch knock your fucking ass out, and it goes all out the door. All that technology and all that science shit that you was doing, like you got Muhammad Ali running the Timberland boots for the amount of rounds and sparring, boxing. 15 miles or all that without that scientific shit you know what i'm saying it's, it's it's crazy man how's rambo rambo good he's about to come out here so yeah that's good him. man yeah yeah I, uh, I just i you know, always liked your dog man your dog knew a lot of tricks yeah you still do <laughs> he's like he's got a high strong personality so it's like you know um i i, I got a mississippi with my my people down there and um 
You know, I got other animals like goats and shit and some chickens. And Wait, well, really? You got like a farm? No, I don't got a farm. It's just like, uh, I don't know what the fuck I've been doing. <laughs> with you, man. This shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I live in Brooklyn. What the fuck I'm But I'm still, I'm dealing with this shit right now. The hardest thing to do is like, not to lose, not to be living too much deep in your dream. Yeah. Like you dreaming. Like, like for real. Uh -huh. you know so, um, yeah, um, I guess them goats is about to become like um, goat steaks and shit. Beat them, yeah. <laughs> get them chickens away. I got a coop down there behind my boy's restaurant. Yeah. Keep the goats in the pan in like a little pan. And my dog's down there. So my dog's going to come up here. Um, I'm not gonna leave them goats down there. I'm gonna probably just say, yo, yeah. what the fuck? I actually, People would be looking at you straight up yeah, if you yeah, brought a goat yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I snapped them when I was down there. I was like, I, was like, I got some goats. And I thought it was cool at the time, but <laughs> just to let you know, we got some Hey, it's the funniest thing in the world. My dad actually had a goat. Yeah. Like when I was like 15, 16, I just rolled up uh, one day and there it is in the van. Yeah. And, and my dad's like, this is gonna be soup in a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I had many stories like that. Yo, I usually, you usually hear that type of stuff in like, you know, a Caribbean culture, but especially yeah. when you're Spanish and shit. Yeah. You got like, what the fuck? What, what you gonna do with this? And like, my dad would walk the fucking goat. I said, Papi, que pasa con this, man? Yo no quiero comer eso, chico, man. I don't wanna eat that goat. Like, where did you get that goat from, bro? Like, where did you, where did, like, we live in the city. You know, it's funny, my, my dad got that goat from the Penny Saver, which is like a, uh, classified ads, yeah, like that they, they hand out oh in the my neighborhood. God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My dad knew this dude. We used to call him the chicken man. He used to live way out and he used yeah. to bring eggs that his chickens used to lay. Uh -huh. One time we was going to the he used to live by the dump out there, and we went out to the dump. And I said, Papi, I may know where the chicken man lived, and I guessed it because as a kid, I remember going out there and doing it. We went out there. Yo, son, my, he had a goat out there. My dad jumped in the pan and was like, I said, man, like the goat was fighting, trying to get away. The goat didn't move or nothing. He just wrestling around to the ground. Like, and I'm like, Poppy, I mean, I mean, are we taking this goat with us? He's like, no. I'm like, then why are you like wrestling the goat like that? Like, well, you're like, you, you trying to tie him up and everything. But that's what I grew up, man. It was hard to say that because, you know, a lot of people think that I'm a, I'm black. I am black. I'm an Afro-Cuban American. My dad, but my dad is like a real Cuban. Yeah. So when I was growing up and shit, man, I got to see some crazy stuff that I used to be embarrassed about, like mm -hmm. goats. My new dad killing goats and shit. And we used to goats in the backyard. Dude, and my dad got, uh, he brought a butcher, but they got the goat drunk and then they slid it oh, and, man. and drained. Listen, man, I used to, my dad, one time I was working at McDonald's when he got out of prison and um, he got a goat, but he always, I don't know why, because he never had friends, uh -huh. but every time he, he had, every time he had like a goat like that or whatever like that, the goat would be uh, with his, all his friends. He have all these Cuban friends around here, drunk Cuban friends, and they They're just hanging out with the hanging goat? out with him about to kill this goat. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember one time he had a pig and he was going to do a pig roast, that's yeah. pretty popular in Cuba. That he did that and dug a big hole in our ground and caught the whole grass from fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Some stories, man. That's, yeah, I know. Now, speaking of um, going back to boxing, when are you looking at uh, coming back in? We looking uh, just around like April, man. I was hoping, you know, I just been here working. You know, I don't want to put pressure on my time with a date. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, like, but I'm here learning a new system. But I'm pretty much game for whatever they, you know, they're gonna bring at me. That mm -hmm. offer. I'm glad that. Virgil, you know what I mean, is that then that chain of command where he's able to, um, you know, c help me come, it go to him first and then yeah. it come to me. It's not like, I'm, it come to me and then it's like, I'd rather for it come to Virgil and, you know, he put it, I really trust his expertise and, you know, his direction. So, you know what I mean, I'm pretty game for anybody and whenever they tell me, they tell me, you know what I'm saying? So you think uh, beginning of April, mid-April, late April? It could be, you know, any minute now. I'm yeah. just waiting on that call. Do, do they have like opponents that they've told you? Like it could be this guy, this guy, and this guy. You know, you hear a lot. I had, I heard that Gulo, I heard all kind of people, you know what I'm saying? But like, I don't get too much deep into that because honestly, you know what I mean? Like, you get ready with for a guy in your head and then you fight a different guy that's called like a mess your brain up. So yeah. right now I'm just like, I'm just, this is my fight right now. Be up in here, learn, learn to be here, love what I'm doing, you know, work, enjoying the people that I'm around and, you know, stay focused, you know, all these different things, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, I'm fighting being here, being away from my family, my kids mm -hmm. and stuff, you know what I'm saying? I got a son who, you know, he depends on mommy for everything, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He just know poppy when it's coming around, it's time for fun and stuff like that, so. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to like make sure that every every bit of my time goes to good use.